Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and this is part 3 in using CakePHP's auth component. In the last video, we finished up our user model, uh, we validated our user data, we ensure that the password field matches the password confirmation field by writing our own match passwords function and using it as a rule in our validations. We also rewrote the auth component's hash passwords method, that way the password is only hashed right before it's saved to the database. So now we're ready to create our login and logout actions and views. Uh, but before we do that, I realized that I made a mistake inside of our app controller. I made a typo where we specify if the logged in user's role is equal to admin. Role should actually be roles, plural with an S. Save that. I accidentally called it singular there. If we look in our user's table, I called it roles here. So you'll want to make that change yourself as well inside of your app controller roles. So we can close that out and we'll go to our users controller and let's create a new action to log in. We'll call it login and that's all you have to do for the action. The auth component will take care of all of the logging in functionality and logic for you. You don't have to worry about it. We'll just have to create the view which will have the login form. We'll do that in a minute. Let's also create our logout action. The logout action won't actually have a view. It's just going to be a link so they can click it to log out. And the auth component will uh, destroy their session and log the user out. So we can just use the controller's redirect method here. And we'll pass in the auth component's logout method. And that will log the user out. So we can save our user's controller and close it and let's create our login view under views users let's create a new file called login.ctp and I'll create an h1 tag and say login let's also echo out just in case there are any auth flash messages so we'll echo out the session flash with a parameter of auth there and let's create our form now so we'll echo out using the form helper and its create method. This form is for our user model and it's going to submit to our login action because we're going to log a user in. And now we need to create some inputs for the username and password fields. So we'll echo out form input and this will be for the username. We can copy this and paste it and change it so that this one is for the password. Now we just need to create our submit button and close the form. We can do that all at once by echoing out the form helpers end method. And that'll close the form. We can also pass in a string here of what we want the submit button to say. We can have it say login, save that, and we can close it. And let's take a look. We can go to users slash login, and we can log in, although we don't have a user to log in yet. Uh, we also want to make a change to our layout. If the user is logged in, we want them to, for instance, on these other pages, or anywhere in the application actually, we want them to have a message saying welcome and then their username and give them a logout link. If they are not logged in, there should be a register or a login link. So let's modify the CakePHP layout. We can get a copy of it inside of our Cake folder under libs, view, layouts, default.ctp. This is the CakePHP layout. So I'm just going to Control A to select it all, Control C to copy it, and close it. You shouldn't edit anything inside of the cake folder. So we'll create our own layout using that code that we just copied. Back in the app folder, under views, under layouts, create a new file in here called default.ctp, and paste in that layout code. And now we have a layout that we can modify. If you notice, the layout is already echoing out our session flash messages. So we have some duplicated code inside of our users views. So under views, under users, 
let's edit our add page. If you remember, we added this call to the session flash method here, so I'm just going to delete it. Make sure that you keep the call to the auth error messages, because you still want to display auth error messages. So we can close the add view. And we'll want to edit the user's edit view as well, because we did the same thing. So just delete out that call to the flash message. Save it. And make sure to leave the auth error messages there. And close that out. And now we're ready to create our register and login links. Inside of the content div, right above the flash messages, I'm going to create another div. I'll give it an ID of user nav. And close it. And we want to check if logged in. Logged in is going to return true or false if we have a logged in user. Else, we do not have a logged in user. And then I close the if statement. So inside of the logged in area, we can give the logged in user a welcome message. We can say welcome and we will echo out the user's username and we'll create that user's username in, in a moment and let's also give them a logout link we'll use the HTML helpers link method and the linked text will say logout and it'll link to the user's controller and the logout action. So now we can copy this so we can create some more links with it. Just change it up a bit. And down here in the else section, this means they are not logged in. So we want to give them a register link. And that'll link to the user's controller, but the add action. And we can say or we'll give them a login link and that'll link to the user's controller login action. Save that. Let's also style this user nav div. Up here in the head, I'll create a style tag. You should put this in a style sheet, but I'm just going to put it here for now. And we can target our user nav ID. And you don't have to style this, I'm just doing it so it looks a little better. I'm going to set the width to 100% and I will align the text to the right. Save that. So now we need to implement the logged in and user's username. Logged in is going to return true or false if we have a logged in user. User's username will return the logged in user's username. So let's do that. Inside of our app controller, we'll create some new private methods down here. The first one is going to be logged in and we will set a variable called logged in equal to false and we'll check if this auth user if this auth user returns true that means we do have a logged in user so we'll set logged in equal to true then we just need to return logged in now we need to pass this to our view so we can use it. So I will say this set and we'll set a variable called logged in and it'll hold the return value of our logged in method. This logged in returns true or false if we have a logged in user and passes it to the view. Now we need to return the current logged in user's username so I'll create a function, it'll be private, called user's username. And I will set a variable called user's username equal to null. And then we'll check if this auth user. If we have a logged in user, we will then set user's username equal to the current logged in user's username. And we can grab that by using this auth user and pass it username. This auth username will return the current logged in user's name and store it inside this variable. And then we just need to return its value. 
and now let's send it to the view so that we can use it there so we'll use the set method again and we'll call it users username and it'll hold the return value of our users username method so I think we're good to go let's try it out we'll refresh oops did I not echo? I didn't inside of our things here we need to inside of our calls to the HTML link methods we need to make sure we echo these out sorry about that so make sure that you echo out the links for logout register and login by adding echo in there let's try it again there we go since we're not logged in we have a register and login links we don't have any users so let's create one I'll enter in my name and let's test out the validations. I'll leave it all blank, submit it, and it says the username must be between 5 and 15 characters and same for the password. So let's enter in a username and let's enter in two passwords that do not match. And we see it says the passwords do not match. So let's enter in passwords that do match. I'm just going to use my username of Andrew Perk as the password here submit it. There we go, the user has been saved. We are registered. We can see it's stored our information in the database. Here's our hashed password and we have a role of regular user. So if we try to add another user, we can see that our isAdmin function is working. It's not displaying the uh, roles field here. Let's try logging in real quick. Let's log in as Andrew Perk. And now we're logged in. You can see it changed. It now says welcome and it brings back my username Andrew Perk and we have a logout link. So if we go to new user, it still does not display the roles field. And that's correct because if we look our current logged in user Andrew Perk has a roles of regular user. We only display that role field if we have a logged in administrator. So let's test out that functionality. We'll do that simply by editing the user Andrew Perk. And I'm going to change the roles to be admin. And we'll hit go. So now Andrew Perk is an admin. So is admin should return true, meaning that we're logged in as an administrator. So let's log out real quick and I'll log back in Andrew Perk Andrew Perk we're logged in so now we are an administrator so if we try to add another user the roles field shows up so now you can have administrators and regular users and hide links and certain functionality so that regular users can't access them in this case now I could add in other users and assign them roles. So there's the basics of using CakePHP's auth component. Uh, the application isn't completely complete. Uh, as you can see you'd want to change some of this. You wouldn't want to display list users to everybody. Uh, you'd want to hide that to only administrators who are logged in. And when you list the posts you wouldn't want to have edit and delete show up for people who are not logged in and for regular users so you'd want to make all of those changes yourself and you could do them the same way that I've implemented here using isAdmin and you can make your own functions and uh, apply your own authentication to your application so I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching